What's going on, everybody? So, back again with the podcast. Uh, another good episode. Um, but before we get into that, I just recently, yesterday, went to, I guess what you would call... Um, I don't know what the technical term is. It's some it's it's something like one of those Ninja Warrior American Ninja Warrior uh training uh, gyms so they have all the similar things that you would see on that show or people that are training f- to be a part of that show have. So I mean it was a blast. I mean it uh, I kind of surprised myself on some of the things I could do and and uh you know we were doing this 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 one thing where you're kind of swinging on a bar and then launching yourself out and then you know trying to grab onto the next bar and i didn't use that much chalk or the chalk had kind of i guess rubbed off my hands and uh i ripped the shit out of my right hand i mean just three giant blister like gashes just ripped off of my hand I mean it it looks like I mean it, it, you know the best way I can explain it is like it just looks like I, I jerked off the human torch from the Fantastic Four or something it's just it's horrific and it burns so bad but man it was so fun just and just super therapeutic in a way just getting to move around and move your body and jump around like a little kid and forget about everything else it was it was super cool but yeah that place is it's called jungle movement and it's in round rock kind of bit of a drive from san antonio but uh shout out to those guys um i can't remember the few guys names i'm not good with names i mean i can look someone dead in the face and they can tell me their name you know, three times in a, you know, three minute conversation and it just does not store away. I don't know why, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, got to do that for the first time and it was super fun. Uh, and, um, yeah. And then on top of that, you know, lately I've been doing a lot of trail running, you know, kind of, it's kind of getting bored of lifting weights and I just needed to change up my workout and, and, I know how beneficial running is for me. It just sucks. Such a fat dick to run. I hate running so much. and But that's precisely the reason why I need to do it. I mean, and I really had these... I mean, I had some pretty profound thoughts in the fact that... I kind of discovered, like... Going through a savage trail run, you know, pushing yourself through, you know, doing a, you know, a brutal trail run, not, you know, not just after you complete it, but during the process, I mean, I've had more self discoveries and more introspective thoughts and ideas and, uh, you know, breakthroughs that I get from no other physical exercise you know and and any movement you know any resistance any you know weight training all of that's beneficial they all have they're all excellent tools to use especially for the mind but you know in its own respect running you know and 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 really running trail running like raw trail running where it's always keeping your muscles guessing and you know you're you're um you know, the elevation, you know, the different changes of elevation and keeping your legs guessing, all of that is, makes it so much harder than just going out and running around your neighborhood. But I guess back to the point is I discover, I mean, my mind opens up more during a run and then for the hour or two after I run, my mind is so open and it's firing on all cylinders it's just so active and clear it's amazing and you know don't get me wrong I mean I even posted something about this on Instagram is you know don't get me wrong like I fucking hate running I hate it but that's why I have to do it I have to do it because I recognize the benefits and not just physical benefits but man just the clarity and you know, just, just the, the, the opening and the expanding of the mind and the thought processes is, 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 is incredible. Uh, and 
I actually, in the middle of my run, I kind of formulated this quote in a way, like generated this quote, which is weird to say, um, but I kind of generated this quote with all these different thoughts that I was having, you know, while I was running. And these thoughts are, you know, particularly negative, to be honest, but putting them together in this way, you know, informing this quote and having the right perspective and the right view on it is really where you get the most value out of it. And I guess I can just shut up and tell you, but, um, you know, the quote that I, that I kind of formulated in my head was trail running is a metaphor for life in that it gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Every step of the way I want to turn back. I never know if I'm going to complete it, but at the end of the day, I'm glad I got off my ass and did it again. And I don't know if this is like being, you know, tooting my own horn or whatever, but it was, uh, it was kind of powerful, you know, even though the, all these thoughts and stuff came from my own head, which, you know, I guess what I'm saying is I'm kind of proud of it, but of these thoughts and, and they kind of, you know, they activated a lot of, uh, you know, this, you know, this direct emotional attachment for sure. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, mm, if, if you just listen to the quote, like if you break up those three little statements or four statements, uh, well, three statements until the last statement, we break up those first three statements. Those are all kind of negative things that you probably shouldn't tell yourself. It's not good to tell yourself that, especially if you're trying to form, you know, positive habits. But if you're recognizing the difficulty and the pain and the suffering and the brutality of the act, and you're still continuing to force yourself through it and complete it, then that's where you see the beauty of it all. And, you know, that's why, you know, I, I kind of wanted to share that, um, idea and that quote that it kind of just came to me, you know, while I was running. Um, but sorry, my nose is a little stuffy. Something in the air is fucking with me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, this week's episode, uh, I have with Gabe and Erica, they are the owners of Dab Hemp Cafe. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure I don't believe that there's any other shop, uh, especially with um, the kind of people they are and, and the hospitality and the customer service that they present to their customers. I don't think there's, I mean, there is no other cafe or even hemp shop like that in San Antonio, you know, it's not, they they didn't, they didn't set out to be one of these smoke shops or one of these head shops. You know, they really wanted to create a community and an environment for people to feel safe to go and ask questions and get educational answers based on, you know, the products that, you know, Dab carries. So Gabe and Erica are very educated on, on the use of CBD. They're both, you know, the, both, both of them, you know, CBD plays a, a big role in their life. They both consume all the products that they carry. And, uh, you know, a little twist, they do these very interesting coffees and juices, all CBD infused and, um, you know, and, and several other products like baked goods that implement CBD and hemp in them as well. And, and you know, it's a, it's a beautiful little shop and they're beautiful people and, and, and they're really trying to stand behind something they believe in and change this negative stigma, um, that is very apparent, uh, surrounding cannabis in this country. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's an awesome place. And definitely if you're, if you're a little skeptical about the whole, um, functional use, whether it be for, you know, muscle pain, insomnia, anxiety, depression, whatever it might be, the, you know, using CBD products for your animals, you can definitely go by the shop and, and check it out. And, uh, you know, they're great people. And if you do go by the shop, tell them, uh, <laughs> this is something you'll hear in the podcast, but ask them where the Hempanada shirts are. We got to push this. We got to get them to make a Hempanada shirt. So, uh, thanks everybody. Um, appreciate everybody listening and appreciate everybody reaching out. Here is the episode. <laughs>
two, one. Gabe and Erica, how are y'all doing? Doing well, thank you very much. It's a good morning. It's a good morning, right. Every day, every day is a good morning, I guess, huh? Every day that we're opening these eyes is a, is a good morning. Exactly. You might want to strangle the next person you see out of anger and <laughs> <laughs> and stress but uh, those are th- those are just situations you keep in your head you can act on those situations it's a great way to start a podcast huh strangling strangers <laughs> it's never a bad way <laughs> <laughs> so y'all have a y'all have a very interesting business i wouldn't say it's at this point in society or the outlook that society might have the, the perspective society has is, is this is not something that we would say is a, a traditional approach to starting a business or even a direction that you might want to take your career. But I think that's probably, or it essentially is, is only come from this taboo perspective that has been kind of placed on society. These societal standards that have been constructed by the powers that be. We don't have to get too deep into this like it's a conspiracy theorist, like I'm a conspiracy theorist, but... Um, to some people, it might seem a little strange that y'all run a hemp cafe and y'all sell CBD products. And where do these plants come from? Or where do these plants come? From? Where do these products come from? They're sourced from the cannabis plant. Mm-hmm. And so y'all had an interesting idea to start a cafe and utilize these industrial hemp products to create uh, snacks and and baked goods. And on top of that, you're selling these products as a health supplement in your own storefront. Yes. Give us a little background information on why hemp products, why CBD? Well, we're gonna let Gabriel talk about that, uh, kind of start that in. It really was his dream, and this is something that we shared for many, many years. Um, it took him a while to find his niche as far as what he was wanting to do with life, and I think he found it, and I think it just was, came together from a place of raw talent, um, very genuine, and um, extremely creative. So, It also honestly came out of necessity. Um, I've been in the hospitality business for the last 16 years. I've been planning events, planning weddings, planning conventions. Um, so a lot of stress, definitely a lot of stress, and I needed something to help me ease my stress at work. Um, CBD is what I turned to, and it worked. It totally worked. It not only helped me with my stress, not only helped me with, with my anxiety, um, but it added bonus, some crazy focus. I mean, I was knocking stuff out of the park left and right, and I absolutely loved it. Um, we loved it so much that last year in November, we flew up to Colorado, flew yeah. up to Colorado just to surround ourselves with the plan, to surround ourselves with people who um, generally love this, and um, we just kind of took off from there. So while we were up there, we were looking for a vendor because we wanted to do something different for San Antonio. We didn't want to open up another hemp sh- or another head shop. In our shop, if you come into Dab, you'll see that we have no pipes, no bongs, no papers. Our store is very, very approachable. Uh, who we want in here is honestly people who are looking for CBD products, people who are wanting the more health and wellness side of the plant. Um, I'm absolutely loving what we're doing. I know it's a total game changer. I mean, I was in the hospitality business for 16 years, completely quit my job to do this. My wife was in banking for 10 years, completely quit her job to do this because this is what San Antonio needs right now. San Antonio needs a nice, healthy approach um, into CBD. I think, I mean, and, and that's and that's great because how do we make change? You have to start you have to start on the micro level and that's that's what's important is a lot of people get overwhelmed with trying to expose or try, trying to exp- trying to expose a product or create a movement and it gets overwhelming and we think how can we reach a broad audience but starting in your community starting with yourself and then starting with your community educating yourself and educating your community on products like this products to live better supplements to 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 utilize natural supplements to utilize rather than the traditional pharmaceutical approach that we're all kind of thrust into and 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 kind of forced to believe is uh, we're finding out more and more now with the transparent transparency with technology and these social media platforms and news outlets that that's 
not the most humanistic approach. That's not the, the best biological approach to be treating most of these issues that, that we have these days. Most of the, most of the reasons people are using CBD products, uh, a big one I'm using, and much of like you said, is anxiety. I found myself having this overwhelming amount of anxiety, almost to the point where it's like, I don't even know why I'm freaking out today. I'm just mm-hmm. freaking out today. You know, I, I would go, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, is I would go running, and I would have anxiety about on the drive to go running, you know, just, just in every sense, I would just, I was a very anxious person. And it's weird and strange that my first thought was like, go to the doctor and, and, and ask them what I should do. So I went to the doctor and I was there for 14 minutes before the guy wrote me a prescription for Xanax mm-hmm. wow. and I was like and he gave me and, and he just gave me a prescription for Xanax and I was like this is awesome let me just go buy a bottle of whiskey <laughs> and chug all these Xanax you know and of course I'm being sarcastic but it was strange to me that it was it was so impersonal you know it was so impersonal it wasn't there wasn't questions about uh why I might be feeling the way I feel or what other issues I'm having. It really just came from the pre-appointment where I filled out a paperwork and they, and you know, asking me what was wrong with me. And I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just super anxious and stressed out. And, you know, I'm trying to solve this whole mind thing, you know, and, and their solution was opiates or Xanax. And, at that point, I was really like, ah, oh, you know, I could definitely take these pills and have a great Friday night, but I'm looking for a more long-term solution, and so that's how I initially got into CBD products. Uh, you know, looking at, and also I live an active lifestyle, and I needed something for pain, especially you know, living active, and that's how I was kind of exposed to CBD products. And I, and going back to my point is, you know, kind of what why you're so passionate about doing this is because this is something you're emotionally attached to, both of y'all. It's something that y'all believe in. And starting in our, in, in our community, creating something like this, you know, creating this storefront, creating this place is a great step in sort of changing these laws and regulations that have been put into place by people we don't even know. Which is strange. And people who have no idea, but rather a stigma. Right. They don't personally take the time to research, to do find find their own voice in it. Um, it's a matter of standing back, looking, and and you know I hate to say this, but out of touch. And when I mean out of touch, is they're they're not in involved personally, or even um, going to seek and find their own, their own, um, I guess, doing their own due diligence at the end of the day right. before and making that judgment. Isn't it strange too, is that before, you know, we reach this level of technology and, and society that we've, we've gotten to, what did us as a species rely on? We didn't rely on uh, WebMD or <laughs> the na- or 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 our insurance company to find us a doctor, and then that doctor to 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 give us solutions and answers about our own personal life. No, we had to seek out those solutions for ourselves. We had to ask our neighbor. We had to ask our cousin. We had to ask our tribe. Mm-hmm. What are the what are the what are the tools, what are the resources that we can use to ail this or that? You know, it was it was a much more con- it was a much more natural and connected approach to ourselves. And and much of the the cannabis plant doesn't it seem sort of ironic that in our body, we have our own naturally occurring endocannabinoid system, and these receptors are present all throughout our body, including in our brain. And these same, these same, this same chemical compound is found in a plant on the planet we live in. <laughs> Yet there's people putting laws into place that are regulating whether or not we can put that plant in our bodies mm-hmm. for a health benefit or for a beneficial use. Right. Regulating nature. And those are the people that need to be using this plant. <laughs> it's like, what is it? it it's, a, it's very strange to me that, like you said, it, 
a lot of people, a lot of these people in these positions to be making these judgment calls or passing these laws and regulations, it comes from a negative place. And I think what's good about what y'all are doing and fighting for what y'all believe in and starting something that might not necessarily be um, or has this negative stigma attached to it, kind of planting your feet in the ground and, and continue pushing through all the regulations and all the setbacks, that's what's going to bring this to the forefront. That's what's going to bring, that, 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 that's the shift that's gonna change. It's the, the impetus that's gonna, that's gonna start this movement, this health movement. And we see this natural health movement happening, but CBD, you know, y'all are jumping on it quick mm-hmm. and y'all are kind of there to establish this here in San Antonio. So what was, what was y'all's first exposure to CBD? I know that you had, you know, you had explained about anxiety issues, but what was, what was it, was there a direct interaction with using cannabis products or was it word of mouth? How did y'all get into CBD products initially? For me, honestly, working on the Riverwalk for the last 16 years, the way we dealt with stress was we drank. We drank a lot. And I wanted to honestly do something cleaner, something healthier. So I went to our tribe. We went to some place that I trust in San Antonio. I went to our local supplement store and I asked them questions. And they kind of turned me on to CBD. Wow. Uh, I tried it at that store. That's interesting. I liked what they had and I actually felt it working on me. I said, this is an awesome product. And from there, I just fell in love with it. But what it is, is me turning to my neighbor and asking questions. Right. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And Erica, how about you? You know, I I grew up in a family that utilized natural health um, wellnesses in our, in sort our culture. Sort of a holistic approach. Absolutely. In our culture, we use a lot of herbs, whether it's mint leaves or making our own teas uh, when you're sick because a lot of us don't have the access to health care when we're growing right. up yeah. um, which is a whole nother topic but you have to find ways and remedies and you do like you said with what you can with what you have at the time and um, so I've always grown up in a holistic um, family so I've always been open to that um, you know but I grew up with a mom who was doing yoga in the 60s and 70s before it got trendy mama and, ahead yeah. of the game wow. <laughs> and who now doesn't have to take any medicines at you know being um, mid 70s does not take any medicines walks every day um, same for my dad who's um, a couple years older latter 70s and they don't take um, you know they're not on a medication um, but rather just um, again that lifestyle where they're you know it's not a crossfit lifestyle but it's just an active lifestyle wait do you mean your mom's not doing box yeah, jumps and no, snatches not at the house tires. <laughs> nope, nope. What? <laughs> but um, she's that, living her life wrong that was my uh you know i just growing up in that um i was very open to learning about the um holistic side and when he mentioned cbd we started researching it and um you know i i When people refer to the plant or even just come in and ask us, oh, do you sell weed? First of all, what a horrible name. What a loaded term, right? (laughs) For a plant who does so much. Right greatness in in uh, these guys in this got industry. some weed yeah you a weed is something that grows that you want to kill you right. want to take that out it messes up your garden it messes up whatever your you know your aesthetics your very landscape. negative connotation attached and so to that word. i really appreciate that we you refer to it as cannabis because when i hear weed i'm like that's such a low grade term for something that is so beneficial that is pretty much essentially the you know the cbd at least what i think of it as the essential oil of the hemp plant Mm-hmm. It's got all those healing properties. So um, when he talked about it, I was like, let's do it. Let's look into this. So I'm glad that I'm glad that we found this. And, and, and how amazing just the properties of just the, that one chemical compound, which is so funny, is that I think there's something like 113 different chemical compounds right. found in the cannabis plant. And THC and CBD are just two, you know, that, and, and they're the, kind of the most directly associated uh, or attached to society. It's the, and THC being the most exposed out there. And I think that that's sort of where, uh, and why there's a negative stigma attached to that, you know, there's a whole history with that. But sort of this negative stigma kind of bleeds off on CBD and it's kind of just, you know, pigeonholed. It's, you know, put in a corner and kind of bundled together. 
and it's not given the respect that it deserves being it, it you know its own you know chemical compound right. if you look at the if you look at the 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 chemical structure of just that one compound found in the cannabis plant i mean the amount of vitamins antioxidants um health benefits that come from just that one co- chemical compound and the fact that there's so much more to understand about the plant that that we don't know and there's it, people are so quick to shut it down you know and it comes from this this fear and this fear is coming from uh the threat of of affecting um you know um monetary gain or or kind of corporations already right. put into place a big one like big pharma which is a 600 billion dollar a year company and you have this natural approach approach that people are kind of taking under them and now they're thinking like oh so i don't have to uh you know walk around like a zombo every single day i can use a natural approach a cheaper approach i can take my power back for my health care and what's the biggest issue facing our society especially in the united states cardiovascular disease Mm -hmm. one of the biggest properties of cbd that chemical compound specifically is its anti-inflammatory properties Mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease is just an is just an inflammatory response in the body and we're thinking like why are so many people dying from heart attacks and cardiovascular disease and a lot of it has to do with diet you know but i mean jesus if we told people that they could take a natural approach to aiding their cardiovascular disease or or take a, a you know a you know ingest a compound with anti-cancerous properties then Oh my God, you know, it's like, don't tell anybody, like, keep it a secret, like, keep them on the Xanax, keep them on the pills, you know, we got to get, we got to, you know, we got to get them in here and then 75 years, kick them out, you know, like, make room for the next ones, you know, it's like a, it's, it's like a, a, a corralling process almost, so impersonal. Right. And I think, you know, and I go off on these real philosophical rants, as you can probably already tell, but, <laughs> you know. A big issue now, I think, is that it's, you know, there's so many people now and there's so we have these laws in place uh, that kind of were, you know, they, for the most part, they were laid down as like an outline on how to regulate certain functions in a society. But now the society has gotten so big that we have a, you know, a structure, a government structure that's operating all these gray areas because the laws and regulations that have been put into place, they don't cover they don't cover every situation um every person on an individual basis it couldn't possibly you can't bend and flex the law for one person so that's why we have the highest population of of our citizens in jail you know as in for you know non-criminal or non-violent acts people getting pulled over for having you know a a cannabis product or something like that and then they spend all this time in jail and they have to go through a process this process that's going to negatively affect their future over something that's negatively stigmatized by the structures put in place mm-hmm. and it's a weird it's like this weird loop this weird negative loop that's feeding itself and the point of it is the reason why i I feel honored to have people like y'all that are doing things like this, not only because I'm directly and personally attached to the products that y'all believe in and that y'all produce, but it's like, it's like Jesus people. It's like some people, I feel obligated to scream at the top of the mountain about the, 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 the ignorant people and the selfish people that are trying to make this more difficult than it should be. And as a, as a as a as a CBD company in which operating on this in this gray area, you know, where as of right now, it's like, you know, it's like okay, states are recognizing it as, you know, go do your thing, but then right. if the feds want to come in because you're yapping too much or making too much of an impression or making or God forbid making too much money, you're too successful, <laughs> then you know they're the first ones to pull that, you know pull that rug from under you and so we would get into these issues now where um you know there are sort of sort of the 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 institutions set in place that we have to go through 
are making this more difficult, making this more, or, or labeling it high risk or whatever right. to have to sell products like this. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, you know, I, I went through a little bit of it, but what, what, what do you think other than exposure can be done to ensure that, that what y'all are passionate about, that y'all can continue doing this in the future? Honestly, it's a lack of education. Yeah. People are worried about our store when literally two blocks down our street, we have a drive through alcoholic beverage stand, which is perfectly fine. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have never been there. <laughs> but no, I mean, we're here for a reason. We're, we're not here to make a huge profit. We're here to have repeat customers. We're here to serve a, a sense of righteousness for a community people come build in here. a community exactly they come in here not only for the oils but they come in here to talk to me and erica they like communicating with us they like to hang out just buy some baked goods or maybe a juice and you know have a nice conversation it's not all about in the shop cbd 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 great i'm happy that you're getting your products here but they also feel comfortable just talking about the topic here as well so i'm happy it's kind of a maybe a little speakeasy somewhat yeah, we, we could say that, a CBD speakeasy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm just playing, but, you know, I, I really, um, I, I think the challenges exist because um, it is it is something new that it's not new in, in general. CBD has, has been there. It's part of the hemp plant, oh, but it's yeah. a new um, topic um, that's come out. Um, you know, I, I think um, here in San Antonio, I think the media outlets have done a really good job to highlight the the, um, the positives. Um, mm -hmm. so you're not always going to see that. Um, we've searched through many countless uh, videos um, from not just San Antonio, but the way news channels will uh, promote that story and, and right. take that spin on it. Right. And, um, you know, we've seen a lot of... Um, a lot of the negative, but we're happy to see a lot of the positive. And we really think San Antonio has been so progressive to welcome us. They have made us feel like it's worth fighting for, although we knew it, uh, just the embrace of the community. Uh, we feel uh, as well the, the media has been wonderful to shed those positive aspects and, and to put that, you know, put that in perspective, um, because at the end of the day, what we always talk about is we're here to help people. That's our, you know, that that's part of our mission is to help them through education, um, to help them, you know, you get an experience when you come to DAB. Um, we're fanatics about customer service. We're fanatics about um, our our store and our customers. And we re regularly, and it's not something that we have to turn on, but we're regularly saying, you know, hey, remember that that person that asked about that. Let's go. What, what can we look at that may that may help them with with what they were asking about? Or they asked us to look into: Are we ever going to do X product or Y product? Let's go check that out. Or, oh my gosh, we found this great article. That's for so and so. Print it out. Let's take it. Let's take it for next time they come in. Um, there's never a time that we're not talking about what we can do for our customers. Um, it comes naturally, and we get excited about doing that. Um. We do. I know sometimes <laughs> you go to sleep. I was like, no, that gentleman came in, and his son was autistic, and he wanted to find out about more about CBD. So yeah. I got to look at research papers, and I need to possibly print it up for him when he comes in because it's about education. It's about people feeling comfortable and wanting to come in here. They're looking for answers, and I might not have them, but I will definitely do the research to try to find one for you. Right, and and so I find it. I, I think it's super cool that y'all took this. You know this kind of this different approach that with utilizing hemp products in baked goods or just in cooking in general. How did that come about? Because I, I know you talked about you worked on the Riverwalk, so I'm assuming that you, in the restaurant business. Restaurant business, um, front of the house, catering side and sales, downtown for the last 16 years, but I've always had a passion um, for cooking. Okay. I've always wanted to open our own little cafe or little bistro, so this was a perfect pairing. Um, and what we wanted to do is just honestly break the stereotype of the word hemp. The products that we use in our baked goods are stuff you can buy at Whole Foods, at Sprouts, possibly right. even at Target. Um, so we just wanted to incorporate that into everybody's daily life because it's honestly being way underutilized for now. So did you have like uh, one of those kind of uh, those light bulb moments where 
you know, you know, I need, uh, you know, you wanted to transition out of what you were doing and have your own cafe. And then also you kind of ran into this, these CBD products to help you on a personal level. Was there one night we were like, oh my God, I wanted a cafe. And then, oh my God, these CBD products, how can I u- utilize these products and implement them into my cooking somehow? Oh yeah. That was one big light that turned on that day. That, that must've been a cool, spotlight. that must've been a cool, <laughs> that must've been a cool time, huh? Oh yeah. And then doing the research, typing in, Googling, and you you see that dear lord this is actually a gap in san antonio that needs to be filled because nobody's doing it or nobody's doing it right so we are happy to be here happy to be filling that gap yeah and we get a lot of questions um and even just um we've had so many people approach us to say you know hey you should be um you know if you guys are the the first San Antonio Hemp Cafe, you want to keep it like that, and, you know, how can you get your stuff in other people's stores, and, you know, how what can you, can you take do? over? How can you do this? <laughs> That's like and, much, and, you yeah. know... Uh, you mean do exactly what the people we're talking about <laughs> that are ruining society doing? Who is this person? Don't talk to them. And so, you know, what we've always stayed true to is, um, first of all, um, you know, with, with our... If there are competitors, it's each other, meaning we look at ourselves first. How can we do better the next day? Um, We applaud those around us who are in the same field. There's enough out there for everyone, and that's really our mentality. But I've always, we've always told each other, no one's going to do it like we do it. it because you know you're individual. You have a different perspective, but the light bulbs that go off. There's light bulbs always going off, uh, you know, with inside this this beautiful, sweet <laughs> husband of mine because, um, you know, his one of his niche is he's an inventor, he's a creator, and I'm yeah. I'm you're a thinker. I'm happy that yeah, he I am, sir. that Sometimes he it gets found me in that trouble, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that he found that niche. I, I think you know that we do work with meaning, and that was important to us too. That's you know he's really found his. Uh, the meaning in his work so you you have that meaning you're not working although we do pull 14 15 hour days oh, we're working. Um, <laughs> but we love what we do and and that's that's the key right there and to be able to do this i definitely need a great partner um a little backstory about erica and myself um i have honestly known this girl since I think, what pre-kinder correct yes. Yes. whoa <laughs> Yes. So I need to write a there. children's book about y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so that long, we've known each other since, since pre-kinder. We met in school, and actually our son goes to the same school where we met. So it's really cool watching him walk the same hallways that we walked. Wow. It really is neat. It really is neat. Um, that is interesting. Yeah, we, we have, um, I, I really think, soulmates at... at How dare uh, y'all? Y'all are making me jealous <laughs> right now. <laughs> soulmates at, at best, but, um, you know, best friends. Um, co work, you know, co workers now that um, in together. I, I love that we can really talk honestly with each other. Um, both of us have um, perfectionist qualities, which, as an entrepreneur, it's it's really hard balancing that because you have to understand that there are going to be times where you fail. There, there really, there's probably uh, more often than not. To a, for a perfectionist, especially like you talked about those challenges, we went through those challenges here and there. It was a roller coaster ride, and and I'll say a lot of it was when one of us was um, really, really at the point where they were like, "That's it, we're not going to do this." The other person got really, really strong and said, "Hold on, step back." Usually, I'm the one on the ground going, "No, oh my God, we're just just not going to work out. I just can't." And Gabriel will step in, you know, really. Um, the leadership qualities. I think he's got some great leadership qualities for for Dab. Um, I, you know, when we talked about it, I, his first initial response was, "Well, you can be, you know, you you can be the whatever you be the first title, and I'll just be the second. But I, I couldn't do that because, you know, between both of us, I think his leadership qualities are so much stronger for this type of business. So um, being able to step back to learn from each other. Um, I'm not someone that. I, I was not part of the service industry. I, I, you know, we we were married through the service industry, meaning as we were married, that's how part of our income came in was through the service industry. So I have a lot of empathy for those individuals who um, work in this industry, who have to work, um, you know, it, that they work for tips. Um, there's a whole different meaning when you're in the service industry. I've learned so much about that and what that means, um, you know, as, as that restaurant experience and understanding the other side of the house and and um, I don't think I've seen I, I come from 
from corporate America. I, I was, uh, my background is human resources. And um, I can tell you, I have never seen a stronger bond between I want to say team members, employees, whatever they're, you know, whatever that um, organization wants to call them. But um, as I've seen with servers, yeah, the service injury that, that's like you're like uh, soldiers on the battlefield almost. I'm, I mean, the the bond was so in the strong. The trenches. The bond was <laughs> so. so strong that they could call each other at one or two in the morning and say, you know, I, I'm I can't drive home, and they will. Two yeah. of them will come out to pick you up. They, I mean, whatever it is, if one person's in trouble. They will go, and they will they will hover over them. They will carry them. You know, they will lift them up. I have not seen a bond like I. I ne- I'm not used to that. I'm right. used to. Oh, guess what? Someone's. Um, I mean, we, I've I've heard um, stories where some you know where um, someone just drank too much, and um, you know, well, they're at work. How can we help them? Um, you know, being in that service industry, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've, and, and we have friends in the service industry as well. Um, and you know, how can how can we help? And that's not you're not going to see that at corporate America. Oh no, you're you're not. That's not that help. Oh, mentality. he drank too much. Well, let me get that job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how can I move up? <laughs> Go home for the day, sir. <laughs> and so, I, and I always told him, I I'd never seen a bond as great as as that. And so, I think that that was really. Um, such a, a learning opportunity for me to see um, that side of it. So I'm so happy that he has that background. And that's why I said it's kind of the chameleon um, because he can be so many things at, at one time. You know, he can prepare this great meal, um, but he can also give you the experience of coming in. And, and um, there's an experience when you're um, served a meal that, you know, oh, so yeah. he's just, it's just that chameleon. So I just think this is such a, a a wonderful idea and how he blended this together and and of course we talked you know it was a it, you know we did th- we do things together so we talked through it um, you know how can this idea be be better and and so it came to form dab um, after a lot of trial and error but again they say entrepreneurs many people are self-made and only the only the um, successful will admit it <laughs> right yeah I mean I, I, one thing I kind of want to touch on which which I find is interesting is it must be a huge relief I mean especially for you Gabe coming from an industry where I mean if, if you're working in the service industry restaurant industry whatever it might be it that those are those are long shifts those are long hours long shifts high paced stressful situations i mean wanting to present countless people on a daily basis with the same experience that you give everyone i mean that's taxing on yourself you know and then when 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 you can actually take a passion or or change your i guess career goal or, or you know kind of strive to f- to follow something that you believe in like starting this you know that's a scary process but actually when that comes to fruition how much more satisfying it is to be doing something that you're passionate about and it and it's kind of scary because you know 98% of us in in this society are are kind of being forced to subscribe to this narrative that we don't really believe in we just have to be a part of it to survive mm-hmm. and pay the bills because mm-hmm. you know the only alternative to that is on the streets you know and that there's no other alternative so how I think it's very interesting that when when you get to express yourself kind of authentically and you get to participate and especially if you're fortunate enough on a career level to participate in, in doing something that you love to do how much how much more turned on you are you know your mind thinks more clearly your mind thinks more creatively your mind sort of it's not it, it, it sort of opens up and it and it's not being suppressed by the the natural stress and dread of doing things that you don't want to do. I actually read, I'm reading this book right now, and I read something last night, and it was crazy because I, you know, I, do you ever notice like if you're reading when you skip, like if you turn to the next page, and then those pages where the the sentence starts out, it's a complete sentence at the f- first the first sentence mm-hmm. of the pages of the complete sentence. And that always catches my eyes because sometimes you can be reading a page and then flip it and you know, it's, it's a big, you know, half of a sentence and then you flip it and you have to continue the sentence. But this was a paragraph where it was just like, you know, a, a, a very 
you know, set in stone paragraph. It started out with, you know, the first letter of a sentence, and this, and it basically went along the lines of explaining how scientists have proven now that on a biological level that actually participating in things that we are naturally and biologically wired to, pushing yourself to do things that you're uncomfortable and scared doing or trying new things actually produces these proteins in your brain that are the building block of new cells. So you're essentially, by, by, by breaking out of this suppressive mental state, you know, and, and we all know that the external forces can for sure dictate our mental state. Like right. we all know that, you know, that's mm-hmm. where depression comes from, where all these negative things come from. By pushing out of that, you're actually changing the chemistry of your brain. You're actually becoming a different person every time, every, every situation that you push yourself farther, every new thing that you learn, you're actually on a biological level producing these new cells that are the building blocks for your brain so you're changing yourself every single day and i think that's i think that that's a i mean how much more inspiration do you need than to know that your body even understands your your the, the structure of your body the chemistry of your body even understands that doing something that you're passionate about and, and, f- and succeeding through something you're uncomfortable with or overcoming things that you were scared of literally makes you a different person. It literally makes you a better person, a more adapt person, a more knowledgeable person. Um, uh, it, it helps you survive, you know? And, and it's strange that we're all trying to get to a place where we can do something, you know, we can monetize something that we're passionate about. We can find a career doing something that we love. Right. And that's why you can, we can come back to the statement that you made. It's not about the money. It's not about any of that stuff. It's just that relief of being like, shit, I get to do what I want to do. This, I'm directly attached to this. This is something I'm passionate about sharing. And those are the reasons why you can put in the hours because you care about it, you know? (laughs) And you're literally changing, you know, the wiring of your mind. You're becoming a better person. And... It's just like, man, it, it'd be so awesome if more people would understand that about, about our species. And then it'd be easier to make decisions more consciously based on stuff like using the C, you know, CBD products or right. using the cannabis plant. You know, we'd, be, we'd be more open to, to experiencing these, th- these things, not just accepting the stigmas, not, you know, not just leaving things as taboo, you know, actually challenging these things you know, it, it, to bring a community together. And then we wouldn't have a bunch of fat, disgusting, unhealthy people sitting around a table dictating how everyone else should live. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You no, know, while they go and, you know, smoke six cigarettes after the <laughs> meeting that they have, you know, and it's a crazy, it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a crazy thought to have, you know, but it's a, it's a simple thought, you know, cause the universe doesn't, is not thinking like if you paid your bills on time this month, right. you know, it's just operating the way that it naturally operates, which is all comes back to this whole thing that if something is natural and it's occurring in, two different species, you know, it's sort of kind of universally, you know, accessible, it's universally palatable for, for an array of different species across the spectrum. Why are we regulating it with man-made structures? Mm-hmm. Right. Is, this, is this too strange for you? <laughs> it gets like this yeah. for me, is it challenging these ideas and, and, and questioning these things is... I mean, I guess, you know, for me, that's, that's something that I've kind of been awoken to. And, I, and, and the reason I feel so passionate, I, and I kind of attach these things together, the reason I feel so passionate about this is because it literally happened when I decided I was going to take control of my health and change my diet and start using, you know, CBD products, hemp products, is whenever all this thinking like these, you know, the, the neurons turned on and started overworking. It's like, well, if I'm making this choice for my health, 
a more and, 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 and trying to take a more natural approach, more beneficial approach for my health. Well, then my brain started thinking like, well, what else am I doing in my life that can be changed for the better? Spreads. You know what I mean? It and spreads it's, to all and, the areas and it, of It's very your strange. Life. You know, it's very yeah. cool. And I love that you brought up the fact that we, uh, about the fear, um, because I, I, we want people to come into DAB that will be able to have that experience, but if they are still have that concern about um, CBD, first of all, we want to give them as much education as we can. Um, at, at that at that time, we want to um, you know have point them to resources. A lot of people want to do their own research, which I highly recommend. Right. I think that's the only way to do it. Um, but also um, just introducing them to. Pastries made with hemp seeds, hemp milk. It's a great introduction um, to that to say, well, hey, why don't, you know, if you want, we've got different levels of it. And and really, um, sometimes people are like, I'll just try the juice. Let me try that. And a lot of times we recommend that, you know, or, hey, I'll just try one of the um, empanadas. And again, empanadas. Yeah. <laughs> you need a shirt that says that. Where's that shirt? Yeah. Empanadas. Yeah, That's the next shirt. That's you need it. like a yellow shirt with like a, like a, a you know, a empanada on it. Like you need that next. We one do like need that. being like cracked open, you know? And it's just, yeah, you know, there you go. Do it. I'm thinking those empanada fiesta medals. Yeah, there you go. Start, yeah, there you go. Think that we got the gears rolling now. So again, it's not about, like Gabriel said, the money. Uh, you know, we're not going to, you're not going to come in here and we want you, you know, we're going to try to sell you a hundred dollars of product. That's never been, that will never be our model. If that's ever our model, then we need to close shop because that's totally us that that's totally um opposite of what our mission is to help people so again um a lot of times people will ask well what did you start with even when they don't ask we tell them we started with the 250 the 250 milligram tincture that's what we started with um again it, it's about the education making someone feel comfortable what i would want someone to do for me if i went into a store and didn't know anything about this product but said i think this can help me now where do i go from here just being honest right be be just transparent being a <laughs> and a lot you know we frequented a lot of shops prior to going into our business as well and you know some um you know, see we 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 saw some that provide a little more education than others, some that try to sell us more on stuff that we were like, hmm, what is that? We're not really sure yet. So, you know, just going around and seeing, again, um, how our model would fit into that. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really about, you know, we're, we're hands-on. You're going to find the two owners working in the business and and at the front of the at the front of the house and in the back of the house. And, and um, you know, at, at some point, point you know at, as we progress obviously that 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 changes um, because then we can work on the business but right now we're in and on uh, the at business the f- at the front at, of the line at the front of the line in the, in the trenches and and that's that's where we want to be that's that's where that's where we need to be right now that's where we need to be and that's where we want to be but that that's something of, about dab too is that whoever's up front you're always going to find that um, educational hospitality sense of community here. We're really proud to be from San Antonio. We're really proud that um, we grew up not too far from here, um, went to school not too far from Five Points area. So um, this it has a lot of meaning. I, that, at the end of the day, Absolutely. it has meaning for us. It's not a turn and burn business. I'm, you're not, we're not here to um, just keep, you know, what uh, our product shelf is small right now, first of all, because it's just us two. We, we don't have investors. We don't have right. backers. We don't oh, yeah. have a warehouse full of products. We have what we can do with what we what we have right now, what we can do. Um, but rest assured, anything on those products before they go on, even though they are third-party tested, me and Gabriel test them for a while before because we want to make sure the quality is there. We want to make sure they're doing what they say they're going to do. And um, it's important. It, it first and, and you know, uh, the, the most important is... We're, this is what we're servicing our customers with. This better be good. Absolutely. It has. It ha- even though it has our our um, the name of our distributor on it, it's still our name that's that's selling it. They're coming to our store, so that better be 
you know, quality items. So that, you know, we have items that we just have not pushed out yet because we test everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gabriel took the dog tincture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got rid of the fleas. Very happy. There you go. <laughs> hey, your coat looks amazing. <laughs> that, those hemp seeds are really doing wonders on your coat, my friend. Well, right. guys, this, you know, I know y'all are opening up pretty yeah. soon, so y'all got some business to do. So let's just, uh, Gabe, just throw out some products, uh, you know, just so people get an idea of what they, you know, what they're going to experience. Um, I think they got a good grasp on on y'all and everything that they're going to, you know, the kind of the atmosphere around that. But just throw out some products, ones that you're uh, proud of, things that people can expect to come in and, and find. I'm very um, proud of our vendors. So we work with the CBD distillery. They're based out of Denver, Colorado. Um, their hemp is sourced from Colorado and from Kentucky. And I'm very, very happy to have their oils in our store. So we have a couple of different tinctures. We have the 250, the 500, and the 1,000 milligram tincture. We we'll also have their soft gels. And um, their salves are actually doing wonders for ourselves and for our guests. We have one salve that's um, helping a lot of people battle, battle acne, and mm -hmm. another salve that's uh, similar to an icy hot that's just uh, honestly helping people with arthritis, helping people with their knee pain, and helping people get some good sleep again. So if you come into the store, please ask me about the CBD distillery line that we have. And I'd be more than happy to tell you everything that I know. Right, and what about the baked goods? What about these empanadas? What's Ooh, going on with these juices Lord. and the empanadas? All right, so if you come in and you want to try something tasty, definitely the empanadas. The empanadas are made um, by my good friend uh, Luis Gar Garcia. Um, I think his favorite one, or my favorite one that he makes is the uh, the cream cheese empanada. Oh, man. The cream and cheese Luis is, is part of the Popular Bakery yes. family. Oh, really? Out on Culebra and Benres. Mm -hmm. uh, amazing baker. Been baking him since he was nine. And a dear friend of ours. Mm -hmm. That, that we grew that partnership, that relationship, just yeah. by opening this. That's awesome. And, and he's a dear friend now. My makes a wonderful, wonderful coffee here. It's actually a hemp seed coffee. Woo! Canadian hemp seeds, Mexican coffee beans, throw in a little bit of Mexican chocolate, uh, hemp vanilla milk, and some extra How recipes in there. How dare but, uh, you? It is amazing. <laughs> so please come in and try that one. Well, guys, thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate y'all taking out time. I know you're all busy, but, uh, you know, I'm definitely here to support. Um, you know, I'm, I'll be in here. Uh, I'll be I'll be pushing for y'all, and I'll be supporting y'all. I expect to see a Hempanada shirt coming up pretty soon because <laughs> I want one of those for sure. Um, but thanks, guys, so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you very much. Guys, get your life right. Come on over to Dab. Let's just be a community, guys. Let's buy some Hempanada shirts, you know, and uh, I think that's all I got for y'all today. Uh, I want to say once again, thanks guys. Um, let's change this stigma, you know, let's battle, you know, let's, let's, let's challenge these ideas that we're putting into place. And, and that's a lot of what, uh, I'm doing with my life. And, and I think that'd be beneficial for everyone. And, and as just, a, you know, just a society, it, it help out a lot. And, uh, once again, guys, just one quick announcement. The podcast is now available on Google Play as well as iTunes and YouTube as always. Thanks for the support. Uh, thank you all for reaching out. And Gabe and Erica, thank you all. Thank you. You all are amazing. <laughs> Cheers.